let's talk about distance, displacement, and velocity. So distance is going to be how far you've gone in total for some certain time period, and displacement is going to be where you end up compared to your original position. So two different measurements. Let's show this with an example. A man starts at zero meters. I'm gonna draw this as we go. So man's gonna start here at zero. He walks 30 meters to the right. So he's going to the right and he ends up at 30. He walks 40 meters to the left. So I'm gonna stack these on top of each other just so we can see them clearly. So 40 meters to the left, he ends up at negative 10. He walks 10 meters to the right, ending up at zero. And then he walks another 30 meters left. So ending up here at negative 30. What is the distance he walked? And what is his displacement from his original position? Well, let's start with distance. So how we're going to get distance is we're going to add up the amount that he walked at each step. So distance is going to be uh, going 30 to the right plus, then he went 40 to the left. And notice how I'm taking the absolute values here because if I wanted to put in negative 40 to the left, we'd end up with adding 40. Uh, then we're going to add 10 to the right, and then we're going to add another 30 to the left. So what this is going to be is 30 plus 40 plus 10 plus 30. That's the total distance he walked. So 70, 80, 110 meters. Now for displacement, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the final position. So this is where he ended up. Let's call this x2 and the start position x1. And we're just going to take the difference between those. So this will be x2 minus x1. So in other words, the final point minus the starting point. So we'll get negative 30 minus 0, which is equal to negative 30 meters. Now, this is important because with displacement, we also have to talk about a direction. So you could say negative 30 meters, or you could also say 30 meters to the left in this case. Those would be perfect alternatives to describe displacement. So the official formula for displacement here, if you have two x values, so x1 and x2, we can pretend for the sake of illustrating this that x1 is the start point and x2 is the end point. The displacement of x1 and x2 is going to be delta x. So delta always means that it's a change in. So the change in x is equal to the end point minus the start point. So basically what this looks like on a line if we're working in one dimensions, we have two points, x1 and x2. So we're just taking that distance there and we also get a nice direction for which way it's going. So is the end point to the right or to the left? Okay, the average speed is the total distance traveled divided by the time it takes to travel that distance. So speed has no direction. So it's just going to be distance, over the time it takes to do that. So for distance, basically what we're doing is we're going to take the absolute values of all of our movements. So let's say we have one movement V1, another movement V2, another movement V3, all the way up to some final movement Vn. We're gonna take the absolute values of that and we're going to divide it by the time it takes to go from the beginning point to the end point, that will give us a speed. So we can write this as a change in time, or we can do something like it's uh, Tn, so this is the final time it takes to get to whatever the final move is, minus the time that you start with. So usually in early problems, you're given that you start at T equals zero. So really you're just dividing by the final end point for a lot of early cases, but for later cases, you have to be more careful. Now, velocity is defined a little bit differently. This is going to be displacement over time. 
So this is going to have a direction. Velocity is what we call a vector. It has a magnitude and a direction. So we know that displacement is just going to be the change in x, and the time it takes will be a change in time. So we could say this is x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1. So in other words, we're taking that displacement and we're dividing it by the amount of time it took to go from point one to point two. So let's see these in action. A horse canters away from its trainer in a straight line, moving 116 meters away in 14.0 seconds. So let's draw this. Let's say we're starting here and it's going to 116 meters and that time it took is 14.0 seconds. It then turns back and gallops halfway back in 4.8 seconds. So it's going to the midpoint in 4.8 seconds. Now what's that midpoint gonna be? Well, it's going to be 116 divided by two, which is going to give us 58 meters. So what is the average speed of the horse? Well, remember for average speed, we're taking the total distance traveled divided by the time it takes to travel that distance. So in this case, first we're going 116 meters and then we're walking another 58 meters. So that is going to be the total distance here. And we're going to divide that by the time it took. So we start at time zero, but then we walk for 14 seconds and we walk for 4.8 seconds. So our average speed is going to be 116 plus 58 meters. That's going to give us 174 meters. And we're going to divide that by 18.8 seconds. So this is going to be our final result. Of course, if we have a calculator, we can simplify this and give a number with three significant digits as our final answer in meters per second. But uh, we're not going to use a calculator here. That's just a final calculation. This is more about the concepts. Now, what is the average velocity of the horse? So this is different. This is going to be displacement over time. So if we were to take a look at this diagram again, really we have a start point at zero meters and our final destination is at 58 meters. Now, how long does it take to get from zero to 58? Well, it's gonna take 14 seconds plus 4.8 seconds. So this distance was traveled in 18.8 seconds. Okay, so now we can just, well, we could use the formula here. So let's just do that. It's gonna be delta x over delta t. Our x ends up at 58 and we start at zero. So this will be 58 minus zero and this will be in meters. And then time, well, our final point is 18.8 seconds and we start at zero seconds. So our final answer is going to be 58 over 18.8 meters per second. But we're talking about velocity. We're talking about displacement. So we need to have a direction as well. So the direction here would be 58 eight over 18.8 meters per second away because that horse is moving away from the trainer. So at the end point, it is 58 meters away. So the velocity is also going in the away direction. Okay. Now, if we want to talk about instantaneous velocity, we need to use some calculus. So, Instantaneous velocity is looking at the velocity at a point. So you can imagine if you have a curve or something and you're asking, what is the velocity at this point? Well, we could always zoom in on this part of the curve and we could straighten it out a little bit. So maybe it looks like that when we zoom in. We're still gonna look at this point so we can keep zooming in. And eventually, as we keep doing this, the line will get straighter and straighter, and then we can find our instantaneous velocity. Because what we're really doing is eventually, when we get so straight, the time difference is like 0. 0.0000. It's super, super small. 
So a limit or a derivative allows us to get at that. So what you'll probably see, and we'll see in the next example, is you'll be given a function. Usually it's called x of t, where x is going to be the position, and t is of course a time, and what that's going to get you is uh, when you take the derivative of it, so this is going to be the position, but when we take the derivative of this function, x prime of t, we're going to get velocity. So you do need a little bit of calculus to do this. Uh, if you're taking an intro physics course, you should be taking a calculus course alongside it, but I will show you how to do this with a practice question. So the position of a particle is given by xt is equal to 3t plus 0.5t cubed. We'll say this is in meters. We want to find the instantaneous velocity at t equals 2.0 seconds. So what we'll do is we're going to take xt and we're going to take the derivative of this function to find velocity. So what is the velocity function? If we get the velocity function, we just have to plug in t equals 2 seconds and we'll know what the velocity is at that second. So to do this, we'll take the derivative of 3t. So uh, how this works is we have 3t to the 1. The 1 is hidden up there. We're going to multiply the coefficient by 1, and then we're going to subtract 1 from that coefficient. So this is going to be 3 times 1 times t to the 0. So this will give us 3. Then we're going to add 0.5t cubed. We'll take the derivative of that. So we're going to multiply the coefficient by 0.05. So 0.05 times 3, and we're going to subtract 1 from that uh, exponent there. So we're going to get 3 times 0.5 times t to the 2. So this will be 1.5 t squared. That's going to be our velocity function. So in order to find out the instantaneous velocity, all we're going to do is we're going to say what is our velocity function at t equals 2.0. So this will be 3 plus 1.5 times 2.0 squared. So this is going to be 3 plus 1.5 times 4, which is 6. So this is going to be 9 meters per second. So this has some direction. It's probably to the right. We could say that. Um, if it's moving right at a certain time. So yeah, we can just say this is going to the right, just as a default. The second question says to calculate the average velocity between 1.0 seconds and 3.0 seconds. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to use our position function. So remember, average velocity is going to be displacement over time. So we know our time is going to be x2 minus x1 over, well, we, our end point is going to be time 3, and our start point is going to be time 1.0. So how do we get x2 and x1, our points? Well, we can plug them into our position function. So we can find x of 3.0 x of 1.0, and this will give us our values for x2 and x1. So x of 3.0 is going to be 3 times 3 plus 0 0.5 times 3 cubed. So what is this? This is 9 plus 27 divided by 2. Uh, that's going to be 13.5. So our position at time 3 is going to be 22.5 meters. At time 1, we're going to get 3 times 1 plus 0 0.5 times 1 cubed. This one's a little bit easier to calculate. This will be 3 plus 0 0.5, which gives us 3.5 meters. So now we have our x2 and x1 values. We know where we started and where we ended up. So let's plug these in. So this will be 22.5 meters minus 3.5 meters. And this is going to be divided by a total of 2.0 seconds. So our result is going to be 
19 over 2.0. So this is going to go at a rate, an average velocity of 9.5 meters per second. And this is increasing, so we'll just choose our default direction, which would be right or up. All right, so this is some basic information on velocity, uh, distance, speed, and displacement in one dimension. We'll talk about two dimensions soon, but the next is going to be acceleration. So, hope this helped, and I'll see you in the next one.